pregnant in her the pregnancy, the stomach on social media. So I was like, Charles, it's not good. He said, oh, the lady took the picture years, months back. She has already given birth and I've done baby dedication. And it's now that she's bringing the picture. You two, you go and see it. <laughs> Whilst you are pregnant, you go and post your picture because somebody did it and you will lose your baby. Because you are copying. Oh, so we're crazy. He's a man, woman of God's daughter. So if he's a man of God's daughter, he did it. Why not me also? No problem. But before the picture came on social media, the baby was about six months old. <laughs> but you, you just pasted it there with the lines, everything, show that you two, you have arrived. I might teach you somebody here. So we, we, we become pre-exposed to a lot of unnecessary attacks because we lack certain levels of understanding in spirituality. It's, it's like going to the hospital and you are, you are not well or you have, let's say, malaria and they give you medication and you take, they say, take it for, let's say, two weeks and you take it for three days and you are okay. So, because you are okay, you say, I don't like the medicine again. I'm okay. You stop it. Now, what is going to happen is that it is true that it is gone, but in the next few months, it's going to come and this time, it is most likely the medicine they gave you will not even be able to work because your system would have fought against it such that it will tell you that this medicine doesn't work for us. So many people have gotten incomplete testimonies. Incomplete miracles. Because even Jesus, it is not everything he said, say it in public. Now, there were reasons why Jesus said don't say it in public. One of the reasons could, was because if they both find that he has open blindness, they will come and attack him. So there are some testimonies that comes on system, comes up, and the testimony can make the man of God's life even be at risk. You, you didn't hear me. Or is it true? It's not true. Yeah. And there are some testimonies that can also put you yourself, your life at risk. Now, this miracle was a creative miracle. Which didn't come like, you know, Daniel's own, it took 21 days. So this miracle didn't take like, normally just eyes open. Uh, eyes open. But this time, <laughs> before he prayed, he had to do manufacturing. He had to take spittle and clay, put it on the ice, and that one didn't solve the problem until God will intervene. The physical, so sometimes, let me give an example. The truth is that sometimes, please hear me carefully here. This is where I, as a man of God, believe that there's a place for medicine and there's a place for prayer. Pray all right, but if there's medicine for you, take it. But Medicine alone also could not or might not be able to solve the problem. Of course, this particular issue, Jesus did not just pray. Is, is it a bad teaching? The way you are looking at me, strangely. He didn't just pray. So if you come to a man of God, oh, take this medicine. Say, I thought the man of God would pray for me. Why is he giving you medicine? Why is he asking me to go and see a doctor? You see, you don't understand. You see, that's why I say that. If your level of understanding is at a certain level, you will know. Daniel's level of understanding is the reason why he broke through. He understood spirituality. Because if you read the Bible, Bible, Daniel always turned his face to Jerusalem when he was praying. So, based on the scriptures, if he turned his face towards Jerusalem when he's praying, he was going to get answers. Based on the covenant God has with Solomon. And I'll deal with that as we go on. So, based on that, Daniel has faced there. So, an angel has been dispatched from, let's say, from Suhum to come to Awoshi. But there is the MC or the DC or the MP of Awoshi that doesn't like you. Okay, let me give you another example. Let me give you an example. Two people went to visit Jesus. Two set of people when he was born. The wise men and the shepherds. 
because the wise men were already in the city, Herod did not worry them. They went straight to the baby Jesus. But the people who traveled before they could enter the city, they needed the permission of Herod. And Herod did not like Jesus. So Herod nearly prevented them from meeting Jesus. So you, if there is no marriage in your home, and you want to import marriage to your home, know that you meet a principality. It is not normal. Am I teaching you something? It is not normal. If it was normal, you would have easily had answers. But this is not normal. Being a millionaire is abnormal in the family. So the day a prophecy comes on you that you are going to change your world, that is the day the principality in the family says, you say what? And that is the day they begin to frustrate you. That is the day they begin to fight you. Look at Herod. Herod intentionally asked the wise men, go. I don't know where he is. Go and look for him. If you find him, come and show me where he is. And I'll show you. And I'll meet you. I'll go and worship him some. He was lying. When the people found Jesus, it took an angel to come and tell them, don't go back. If they had gone back, it would have been terrible. And then it took, hear me carefully, it took an angel to tell Mary and Joseph, take Jesus and leave the territory of Herod. Go to Egypt. Another, leave the town. Location. Am I teaching somebody here? Leave the jurisdiction of this town. And guess what? Herod killed thousands. But guess what? Sometimes I tell people this, that when it comes to destiny, when you are a destiny person, don't fear. Look, much as Herod was killing people, Jesus was hiding somewhere in Egypt where it was with, not within the jurisdiction. Oh, God. Herod does not have the power in Egypt. And Egypt does not need Jesus. So you can be comfortable there. I don't have time because I have a lot to teach. I can also give another example. Should I give one more? This is David. When he was in Israel, Saul wanted him dead. Where did he go to? He went to the Philistines' camp and behaved like he was a madman. <laughs> Until the time was right for him to return back. The problem with most of us is that as my mother came do. Some of you, the people who are doing you are the people who you call close friends, family, who you tell everything to. You are not a man. You are not a man. Can I continue? I wish my microphone would be bolder and whatever. I'm trying. I pray that by the time I finish, I will not have sore throat. Where was I? David. He, he is unfortunate that even though he killed Goliath, the Philistines loved him than Saul that he killed Goliath for. Isn't this strange? Now, that means the question to ask yourself that could it be that the, a certain territory is the reason why your miracle is delayed? Number one. Not that sometimes tomorrow you don't have the power to overcome the territory, but at this level, oh Jesus, you don't have the power to fight the territory. So wisdom will tell you that Am I teaching something? Am I teaching something? Do you know? Do you know? Do you know that? As I said, let me say this. I told some people this. 
that if we're a man, I, me, me, I sacked Pastor David from my house. Minister Andrew, that you are growing, go and rent. During that time, it looks like I was very wicked. But the truth is that when you are in certain territory, let me give you an example, at a certain age, if I stay with mommy, daddy, you don't buy plates. You don't understand me. You don't even understand life. The day you marry, that's the day you realize that the only thing you have is the cloth in the wardrobe. I remember the day I was moving from my mom's house. I packed TV that it was in my room. When I got home, they told me that I returned the TV. It has made the room empty. It took Pastor David's mother to bring me TV to watch. I will not forget this. Big TV. That it was a very, but my TV was small, like 12 inch. And the mother brought us 36 and a 21 inch. Mine was like 12. My mom sent me a message. He said, he said, I went to your room. The place looked empty. Return the TV. <laughs> when you were there, you were watching it. It looks like it is yours. But it is not yours. I think I'm not teaching well. And it takes a level of, let me use the word, illumination. When you are teaching some of these things and you are not careful, somebody will think you don't like them. I repeat it. One of the um, curses of Africa is parental love. Outside the Arab nations, the Ethiopia, um, Europe and co, if you start talking about, I know my right, you must pay rent. You can stay in your mother's house, you pay rent. And it is normal. Let a parent tell the child to pay rent. The child will say, you have disowned me. Is it true or is it not true? Or is it true or is it not true? Hey, you don't like me. But outside, you'll be staying in your mom's place, your dad's place. You'll be paying rent. Paying the bills. Because at least it's better than staying in somebody's place but if you give the parents your money to your parents, the money stays at home. You are quiet. So, in moving further, Jesus opened this man's eyes. But the eye could not be opened in his own city. Let me tell you this. There are certain things until you encounter them, you will never mature. You will never know how anointed you are until you meet trouble. Early this morning, I was praying for somebody. When I was praying, the Lord said to me, early this morning, this person just came out of prison. I said, yeah. And I could feel this person out of prison. So I told this person this afternoon, when I was praying for you, I thought you had come out of prison. Now, if you say somebody's in prison, if you are not careful, you say, which is, I don't know his own. But what is this prison? In my book, Charismatic Revolution, I said, captivity is not really chains on your hands. Captivity is the inability to do things that you want to do. Let me tell you. I have ability to slap Pastor David, but I won't. I have the freedom to. I'm not in bondage not to. I have a choice. So if right now I want to eat pizza and because of my health I can't eat it, I'm in captivity. If right now you want to switch on AC and enjoy your bed and you can't, it is captivity. So now the question is, how many people think they are not in captivity? 
<laughs> Why shouldn't you be able to marry in the next five months? Why? And guess what? What you are captive in, somebody is freed in. Some people, if even you kiss them, they'll get pregnant. No man kiss. If he is peg, they'll get pregnant. They are virgin Marys. There are some people too, you can do IVF. You can do whatever, all the positions, no matter what, they will never get pregnant. Some people, they just go to a place, people see them and say, ah, are you looking for a job? So, no, I don't want a job. I have one. So, like, I'll give you one. Some two, they will apply. Nobody will give them a job. Some women, nobody will propose to them. Some women, many people are proposing and they are wondering why. So, to the one that many men are proposing, to that woman, many men proposing is captivity. And to the one that nobody is proposing, people not proposing is captivity. So the question is, which captivity are you in? <laughs> are, are you with me? You know something? Serving God is so nice. It even fills my eyes with tears. If you really understand how God... You see, God doesn't want you to serve him out of compulsion. He wants you to serve him out of your own free will. Do it because you want to. That's why you are. God doesn't like that. And you know something? Many people, and maybe when I'm dealing with um, the, another part of it, I will deal with it. Many people have failed God when God gave them riches. And I'll get into that maybe when I get to the past six or whatever, don't quit. This is another part. So, the question now is that why did Jesus open his eyes? I want you to pray to God that God open my eyes. Open my eyes, Lord. We want to see Jesus. Ephesians 1 16. Open my eyes, Lord. Now let's look at this. This is Paul preaching. And Paul said, I do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. Paul is saying that when I pray, I mention some names. I mention Timothy. I mention Titus. I mention Demas. Phoebe. These are all people that followed Paul. I mentioned Apollos. But what does he make mention of in my prayer? What does he pray about 17? That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and the revelation in the knowledge of him. The next line. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know. So the level of your eyes understanding will determine what you know. Let me tell you this. Anybody who has traveled like going up and down, travel around, there's a way they live their life. Their house looks a certain way. What they see outside influences their roommate. Is it true or is it not true? And those who have not gone anywhere. Listen. I remember we designed our church building. The day we did, I think, during the course of it, we went to marriage retreat, marriage something, something at somewhere. I forgot it. As soon as I entered 
the entrance, I called the pastor. I said, "Look, our auditorium, man, you must design the entrance like this." I, was it you? I called him. Call the architects. Change of plan. <laughs> we must make the entrance. Where, where our own? What was that place called? The, the foyer. Where we, when I entered the foyer, I can look. I said, "Wow, with these pillars." I said, I, "I said, Pastor David, go and bring the architect." The following week, the architect was called to go to the place and see how the place looks like, and we and we are building it. The truth is that until you and who will be feared at home, which is our champion. You are shaking your head. Which um, listen, Daniel, do you understand what I said? What did I say? Hey, our Nigerians are already understanding that thing. <laughs> no, the average person, you see, when you've not encountered knowledge, you feel you know. And let me tell you, where you are now is based on what you see. And what you see is based on what you know. So when the man met Jesus, he knew that he was blind. Blind to what? And Paul said, I am praying that the eyes of your understanding will be what? Enlightened. Let me tell you this. I have been doing counseling today. And what I tell you is that you have to even take pen and paper. One of the things that shocked, I told Pastor David, Pastor Point, that shocks me is that I think people, when we preach, you don't hear. And I don't blame you. I think I don't blame you because you don't understand. And I don't understand you because, excuse me, forgive me, spiritually, when in VA, I was teaching some people just yesterday. I was angry. I mean, I was angry. I was angry. And the Lord said, Francis, you are angry. You can't be angry. Even me, Jesus, I taught my disciples. They didn't understand me. So if you teach and they don't understand you, Jesus said to the disciples, one day I'll teach it. Jesus said to the disciples that to be careful of the living of the Pharisees and the living of Herod. All of a sudden, the disciples go into thinking that, ah, is it because you don't have bread? Jesus is talking about the living of the Pharisees and the living of Herod. You are thinking of bread. And he's not talking about bread. He said, we didn't bring bread. Is, is Jesus going to be hungry? When Jesus one day even said to the disciples, go and buy me food. They went and buy watch it. By the time they came, Jesus said, I'm full. And they said, ah, who gave you food to do? He said, my meat is to do the will of God. The evangelism is his food. He has already preached to a soul who has brought the whole city. So when he said, go and bring me food, did he mean food or he meant soul winning? So if I'm not careful, you will hear God saying something and based on your level of understanding, you will misinterpret it like a guy. It wasn't the devil prayed for him. It wasn't anybody. Jesus did a miracle on him and he said, I see men like trees. It's Jesus. His understanding with every human being is a tree. Of course, it's in the Bible. You shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of waters. Which stream never with us, and whatsoever thing we shall do. The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. So, of course, maybe he has overseen, he has gone to that level where he was seeing too much. God, then Jesus will say, Let me bring you to the level that you can see human being as you are. Look, if God should open some of your eyes, and you see that people, not everybody walk with their eyes and their legs, some walk with their head, you won't even choose to see I've seen people who enter auditorium and they are half human, half horse. And they are people's friends. <laughs> now, as a believer, I remember we sent this topic some time ago that it should be your prayer topic. How many of you still pray that God, let the eyes of my understanding be enlightened? Many of us don't pray. 
Paul said, I cease not. Lift up your voice and begin to pray, Lord, open my eyes. Illuminate my understanding. Give me the scripture again. That the eyes of your understanding will be enlightened. So that you may see what is the hope of his calling. And what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. 19. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the weapon of his mighty power. So give me John 12, 40. You see, the reason why we are going to pray that your eyes will open, your understanding will open is that I can I still ask God have is are people supposed to be blessed? Say, so many people they bypass their blessing. They saw the blessing like this and they walked past it. Because they didn't notice the blessing. They met opportunities. John 12, 40. I've taught you this before, but I'll teach you again. This is what the devil does to every believer if he wants to destroy you. Simple things. Read. The God of this world has what? Blinded their eyes, hardened their hearts. Lest they should see with their eyes, lest they should what? Understand with their hearts, and then so that I should heal them. So wait. Why are you not getting healed? Now, this one said, and then, but look at the original King James. They, he used the word be converted. Give me. And if you, if you are into electricals or you understand physics, you will understand conversion. Moving from 110 to 220, 220, conversion. Jesus was trying to say that what this I see, I want this eyes and your understanding to be converted to a certain level. I have some things around me that I can't use. Because I need a converter to be able to convert it from the 220 volts we have to 110. Are you understanding me? To reduce it to a level. So in life, you should be able to know if your understanding is high, when to go low and when to go high. If understanding is so deep, there are times that you should know that at this level, I need to go this low. At this level, I need to go high. If you ask the musicians, when you are singing, nobody should tell you that there's a time that you yourself must know that at this level, I need to go a higher pitch. At this level, I need to go a lower pitch. At this level, I must take the microphone a little bit far away. At this level, I need to bring the microphone closer to me. Why? It is all an art of communication. And when you can't do that as a musician, it means you don't understand music. You sing, but you have no understanding in music. Am I talking to someone? So let's read it again. Go. He had blinded, he had hardened, so that they should not see, nor understand, and be what? Converted. So let's look at this. Did Jesus, what did Jesus do to the blind man? He converted his eyes. <laughs> the eye was converted from blindness. To see men like trees, to see men like men. So in other words, the, the eye has the ability to be converted into three forms. Blindness, not seeing at all, and not seeing well, and seeing. 
So ask yourself, which one is you? Many are totally blind. Some are partially blind. Some can see. But the question is, which one are you? You can be working with the man or the woman you are supposed to marry. And you never know. Some say, but I've been seeing it in my dream. You don't, you don't see such things in your dream. I always tell people, don't marry by dream. Let's go on. So now, how would you know that this is an opportunity? If you are Daniel, you are reading a book. Daniel chapter 9, give me there again. In the year of Darius, I, Daniel, understood by the books that the captivity of Israel is supposed to be over by 70. How can you be reading a book and all of a sudden you gain understanding? In other words, the understanding his heart received was an eye-opener. That was the first stage that pushed him to prayer. Now, with that understanding, your prayer is meaningless. Ah, oh, look, oh, I'm praying. What? What? What if you are praying and you're you understanding and you can't see? <laughs> I don't want to give you this example. Do you know that if Jesus was not perfect, he would have left the man. Who sees men like trees to go? And like the whole world will regret. He will use you for helps. <laughs> he will not value you. He will cut you down. You know, if let me if 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 the well need that the little boy born in a manger will be the Messiah. Would they have allowed him to be born in a manger? But what happened to the wise men? Their eyes were opened. What happened to the shepherd? Their eyes were opened. Why didn't the people who gave the manger to Jesus give their hotel room? Their eyes were opened. So, you can be working with a lady or a guy, small boy, small girl, and if God should open your eyes and show you that this person in the next 10 years will be a big person in Ghana, how would you treat the person? You would treat the person differently from that day. And when the opportunity comes, your breakthrough becomes bigger because you foresaw into the future. You know what we, most of you will do? We wait for the person to arrive and say, but what attitude did you put up? Your, the attitude you put up will confirm to the Father you really had an understanding into the opportunity God was giving you. The truth is that not acting is a sign that your eyes of understanding were still blinded. Am I teaching well? So look at someone and say, are you partially blind? Look, one of the things I, I love to do, my preaching message that I listen, I don't mind, I can give it to you to also listen. I can give you the book I'm reading to also read. But what I will preach, you can't read. Because my understanding is deeper. We can all hear the same thing. Are you understand? You can all hear the same sentence. But when we are interpreting the sentence, my understanding of interpretation. That's why I quote a scripture and said, ah, but this scripture, I've read it before. I've been reading this thing before. I never saw when Jesus said, don't go back to the town. <laughs> I never saw. It has been preached several times. And when did it ever happen that Jesus said, don't go anywhere? Who has ever preached about a town going away? Oh, I've heard about Daniel and the priest of Persia. But did you ever know that it was out of his jurisdiction? Today I had a visitor. No, I had somebody I was counseling. I had he started a church. When I was praying for them, I was talking to the person. I don't even mind the person because I have, I have a kind of mindset. Whilst we were talking, then he said, 
my brother is this boy. And that was one of my godly sons. So, wow, that's your brother. So wonderful. Then, I was telling him, okay, buy me oil so that the next time you come to church, I'll pray over it and give it to you. Then I asked him, where do you go to church? When he mentioned the church she goes to, I said to my office, get her oil. Why? The church she goes to, she understands oil. If she had come to me and told me she goes to those kind of other churches, I also wanted to bring her own oil so that she would not have belief in oil. She would have belief in Jesus. So bring your oil so that in front of you, I pray over it for you. So you know that in your bibina media for oil in Fizra. In your oil in Fizra and Yeju. I don't know why you understand me. So based on where how we spoke and I got to know the understanding she has. It changed my prophetic direction towards her. Can we move on? Look at someone and say, have you seen an opportunity? How does an opportunity look like? Okay, let's look at some opportunities that we have missed. Look at Isaiah chapter 60 verse 11. Isaiah 60, 11. Read. Therefore, whose gate? Who? Okay. You were reading it as if it's somebody's gate. But when I read it, I see it like it's my gate. Read. Go. Therefore, Shall be open? No, only on Feast of Miracles. Oh, when I'm in church. When I am praying. Now, you see, having this mind that the gates must not be shut. Read it. Go. Let's go. Therefore, your gates shall be open continually. They shall neither be shut day or night. Why? So that the men may bring to you the wealth of the Gentiles and their kings in procession. Wait, is it likely that when the men were bringing you their wealth, your gates were shut? Or is it likely that you were blind? Is it likely that you were partially seen? He said your gates must be open, continue, and they must not be shut day and night. Tell me how about your two manager? <laughs> but bother, bother, no. You come upon six, but the smuggling happens after six. <laughs> True or false? Yeah, that is where nobody's eyes is seen. Contraband goose. It is during that time that it comes out. So now, <coughs> let's look at it. Therefore, your gaze. So now, let me tell you this. If I am the devil, one of the things I need to do is that I will shut your gaze. And let me tell you this. Everybody, you don't be surprised, you have a gaze. Let me give you an example. Let me give you two or three examples. All your senses are gates. Your eye, your ear, your feelings, your taste, your nose. All of these are gates. How you feel. How you feel about a person will make you receptive or un unreceptive to a person. True or false? Or is it true or is it not true? How you see a person, how you even smell a person will make you receptive or unreceptive. No bomb. But sometimes you can meet somebody who is smelly, but it's due to circumstances beyond their control that has made them smelly. If you can polish them, as soon as you polish them, they will turn you back to the original source and they see you as the one that helped them. Sometimes God can let somebody go into trouble for five minutes. And the reason why the person is going into trouble for five minutes is because you must be the one to help the person. 
in your helping the person, the person comes back and says, I have all this thing. I don't know who to give it to. Can I give it to you? But because you saw the person and you assume that, who is this? Why should I help this person? That thing can close it. Now, what if you're also going to help somebody who's an arm robber? So it means that your understanding of a certain spiritual things must be enlightened. Because if I'm not careful. <laughs> Is it true or is it not true? Why, why is it that there's another gate people don't know? Why is it that when your father or your mother curses you, it's done? Number one. Because your father has your, it's, it's his seed that brought you to this world. Note. So when a father curses his son, he has cursed himself. It is part of him that is gone out. And a woman, women are the only gateways to the world. Nobody is permitted to enter this world and you are born through the womb of a woman. So if you abuse a woman, you shut certain doors. You're hating you. I read a Bible where Peter, who was married, said, Men, if you don't treat your wife well, God will not hear your prayers. I said, Ah, me and God, we are praying. If me, I don't treat my wife well, my prayer is bogus. How? I said, wait. How are you treating this one? Your gates must be open continually. They must not be shut day or night. So me the El Honuma and Naba. The, the shutting thing. I'm not in the mood for praying. You don't need mood. The case must not be shut. I don't know if you shut your gate when they must be opened. You mind me. Many have missed great opportunities. Why? When I was praying a prayer, let me use my bigger microphone. Was I was praying the prayer. I told God, I God, if you I took a prayer from John chapter 4. And I told God, I God, if you watch me and you want me to sow seed, to sow seed. And because if I sow 10 cities, I'll get hundredfold, thousand. So if I sow one, by the time I harvest ten, I move to thousand. Now what I want to buy now, somebody has bought it. Who could it Diana pass over to? And they say sow a seed. And you want to sow ten cities. You have to mature to be hundred cities. Before it mature, to be tazzy, before it mature. By the time, who is waiting for you? You are blind. So I began to pray, and God showed me a scripture in John chapter 4. He said, how long is this to the harvest? He said, four months. And he said, hey. Then Jesus told the disciples, lift up your eyes and see. Lo, the harvest is ripe, but the laborers are few. Pray ye the Lord of the harvest so that he will send you into the harvest. Because there are people who it's time for harvest, they don't want to harvest. So if you position yourself, you'll be employed. I said, Kai, God, employ me. You don't understand this. Oh, who is this? Who is this? Give them the scripture for me. Then we were in Aslam down. Cozy in. We have not even moved to Malam. And I closed my backless account. As David is here. 
I closed it. And I sowed a seed and I told God, enter me into the harvest. He said, do you know, still four months then have, comes harvest? <laughs> oh, one of them, I'll do well. <laughs> yeah, 2021 is my year, forget it. He said, said, now, behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes. Understanding is very, very important. Lift, again, we are dealing with the word eyes. Lift up your eyes and look at the fields. For they are already wild, white for the harvest. Go to the next line, please. He who reaps receives wages and gathers food for eternal life. But he both he who sows and he who reaps may rejoice together. This is not to give me the next one. Give me 37 first. Give me 37 first. Then come. For in this the saying is true. One sows, another reaps. So wait. Oh. They are simple. They are good at showing. They don't have an eye for the harvest. So people, there are people who can date a man or a woman. Uh, when it is time for the man to proceed, they will break up. Or the woman to make it, then they break up. <laughs> so in this world, it is not all those who sow that reap it. Ah, you think it's not true? Some of you, they plantain in the neighborhood you have been cutting. Are you the one who grew it? <laughs> I asked somebody, say, oh, the one who grew it, the, he has already harvested his own. This one came by God's nature. I, I, I don't know if you understand what I'm saying here. Look, do you know that there are some houses eh, in town? To date, nobody knows the owner. It is under lock and key, and the weeds are growing there. Sometimes, some of these houses exist, somebody will just jump in, open it. Because when the guy was building the house, or the woman was building the house, he didn't want any family member to know because of um, witches and wizards. Nobody knew. He built the house, and one day he died in the family or something. Nobody knew the house. Somebody can easily go in and take it. There are so many people who know, you see, you see, them tell you, Christians know how to sow, but they don't know how to harvest. Because when it comes to harvest, your understanding is very, very important. So 38, he said, I send you. And that's, what that, that's the time I pray. You are going to pray it also. Say, I send you to reap that for which you have not labored. Others have labored and you have entered into their labor. I said, God, wherever the harvest is, send me there. Anybody who is misbehaving there, let me go and sit on the seat. And that's why I started meeting some people. Yeah, I was there one day, I was praying. Somebody called me, he said, no, no, where are you? He said, I'm walking. He said, I, I always say my tie to this place, but you know, this, this guy calls me and he said, his stomach. So I prayed for him. And he said, eh, I wanted to call my pastor, but when I call my pastor, he will not pick. So I called you and I'm healed. Oh, man of God, so where are you? I have to send you my tithe. Hey. That's the first time I held a thing, thousand or thousand, two thousand dollars. I went for the tithe. Master, that day, mommy was in US. I was owing. You see, if that that day I was owing somebody, and the person has tormented me, somebody I've helped was tormenting, and I went to the person. I told him by six a.m. I me, mean, those who know me know me. By six a.m. I'll give you the money. And as I was talking, I didn't have one CD. And I remember this very well. It's when Andrew came there, I remember. Andrew came to me and said, don't worry, daddy. Tomorrow morning, I'll go for a loan for you from also <laughs> And I was praying the prayer. Lord, send me to the harvest. I cleared my backless account. Send me, send me to somebody's harvest. Around 4 a.m., my stomach is paining me. Pray for me. 
And I pray, he said, he asked this big bishop, he doesn't pick his phone, but when he called me, he's gone. So if he's gone, I must take the tithe. He brought me the tithe. Hallelujah. You see, the tithe was for somebody, but I prayed a prayer. And when the man of God was sleeping, me, around 4 a.m., I was and when the call came, I was all in the street. He said, be healed. The stomach pain went away. He said, you're I went for it. I went to the person in the morning. This is the tithe. It's in dollars. Give me change. I said, this is, the, this is your money. Give me change. They were shocked. They thought I had the money there before. I said, no. This is the money. Give me change. You see, if God decides to send you, how would you know that God is sending you to the harvest? If it is you, but how would you call me at this time of the night? Let me talk to God. Because you have been learning that when you are praying, focus, don't pay calls. <laughs> may the eyes of your understanding be illuminated hey, you are praying so you don't pick up you must concentrate on the Lord when the phone rang I pick I said hello I was in front of Good Shepherd Methodist Church I pick it oh my stomach oh papa I'm wasting my time with my bishop come for the time it was a miracle sight. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Lord, send me to the harvest. Savior. Be on your feet. Savior. Savior. Here. My heart. Oh, cry. When I sing the song, is this scripture that makes me sing it? Wow. Now all this you are called all in do not pass me by. Thanks. I, I'm sitting down. Pastor Ennis has brought black Americans. I'm sitting in my corner. They have gone to tell the man that me, I am 419, I'm after money. And nobody was greeting me. I was in my corner. I was there, and the man of God came, Pastor Petty, now my special father. Came and said, What is your name? I said, Francis Yale. They spoke him bad and things about you, but I don't know. Something tells me you are good. I laughed. He said, I didn't come to Ghana because of this. I came because of my childhood friend, Pastor So So and So, who is in Ghana as a missionary. But you show program, I will follow. Master, somebody gets into a plane, comes to Ghana, ends up with you than the one who invited him. What are you telling me? <laughs> You are going to pray. Now, Lord, I'm tired of hand to mouth. You've been saying, and I got I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm preaching nonsense. You're afraid you're not preaching. You'll be there, and somebody will tell you, Oh, I have a land I'm selling. Won't you get anybody? to buy. As soon as you put the phone down, someone will call you, ah, I need plot, I need this plot of land to buy. So I'm coming. You tell the person, how much is it? He said, this thing is $80,000. Okay, I will sell it at 100000 if you agree. Why not? If anybody will buy 100000 you make your $20,000. Say, ah, where did this thing come from? Meanwhile, he has given to agent. The agent have gone the whole world. Fine, 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 fine. Nobody has bought it. You take it up. That is the day the building goes. Now, me, 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 I will marry. Can do you have anybody? Nonsense. Oh, let's take it to prayer. 
you are there, another friend comes to you. <laughs> say, oh, we crash on you. You connect them, say, connect you with the master of our. And so, you must also give me something. Say, Lord Jesus, send me into the harvest. <laughs> say, everywhere the harvest is ripe, send me there. Where the harvest is ready, Lord of the harvest, I know the harvest is ripe. Somebody is refusing to go. Somebody is refusing to work. Somebody is refusing to get there. But me, I am ready. Send me there. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Pray crazy. Don't forget, he said, your days will open continually and they must never be shut day and night. You must be ready. You must be expectant. You must always be there and say, Lord, which opportunity is coming? Which opportunity is next? Which door is next? You want to resign, you want to quit because nothing is working. Move from a sowing season to a harvest season. I send you to reap that for which you have not labored. Others have labored and you have entered into their labors. Another souls, another man reaps. There are many who's, who came to help us build this building and who are no more in the church. They were the ones that helped us to build this, but they are no more. But you are the one doing wedding inside. You are the one doing this thing inside. In the same way, we can finish this building. Some will not be available. Pray. Send me into my harvest. Send me to somebody's harvest. Somebody's harvest. Somebody doesn't like it. I like it. As we sit, somebody, there's a visa opening. Somebody say, Kai, Lord, grant it to me. When your gates open continually he says that then the Gentiles will bring you the world. Give me the 6011. I said 6011. When your gates open, then the wealth of the Gentiles will come and their kings will come in procession. They will come in procession. They came, a king came. Your gates was not there. Your gates were not opened. You were not receptive. Robans, Rapakata ma zoom perigede be urekede man tori bigede bete bigede zoom pakata pan tari be rekede zoom kata zoom perian tari be be rakata pan tari yan tari be okobom paramasing lekede kete ben tori be be lekede ben tori be anara ba zikede ben kata lamla zoom perigede bara ba yekada pan tari be be yekada pa ka kata ba yekede be 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 lakavan tari now command that every door of opportunity that has been closed you are opening it you are opening it you are opening it you know you are opening your gate morning noon and night because you are not going to shatter when the opportunities come you are available you are telling god give me another chance give me another opportunity i'm not messing up this time i'm not messing up this time come on look out of me many are saying that the harvest is over but lord i think there is something more for me there is something more you can give me and I'm ready for that harvest. Rebecca ta lo koto zigiti ben tori bidi ben le kata ban tori yandala ma zigete bon takete ben le kede bon tori ben le plan takete ben ro kata ban tori ben o ko bon tori ben le plan takata ben zin tori kete ben dele ben. Amen. Let me give you an example. One of the things that closes doors is when. You have to give your tithe and you give it to your girlfriend or your boyfriend. It, it closes the gates. 
Well, read your Bible, Malachi chapter 3. And I'll open the windows of heaven and pour you down a blessing. One of the things that closes doors is when God is telling you to do something, sow a seed, do something, and you wait for the man of God to say before you do. What happens is that you didn't honor God, you honored mine. You say you are waiting for man's confirmation. No, you should have honored God's confirmation. What if it is a lie? Then your spirit of discernment is low. Give me Isaiah chapter 45, 1 to 4. You are going to pray and deal with crooked rules. The enemy is crooked. That says the Lord to his anointed, to F.D. Yali. I don't know whether you saw your name there. Whose right hand I have said, Oh Lord, hold my right hand to subdue nations to lose the armor of kings, to open before me double doors. <laughs> Say, I want double doors. Say, I want double doors. So that what? The gates will not be shut. So we are going to pray the first. Say, Lord, hold my hand and open to me double doors so that my gates will not be shut. Open your mouth and begin to pray. The Bible says, and the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah. And the Jabez prayed and said, Oh Lord, that your hand will come upon me. And the Bible said, the hand of the Lord came upon Ezra. And because of that, he obtained favor. So you are praying the Lord, like your hand came on Cyrus, let your hand come upon me. To open before him, to open before Cyrus, the double doors, double doors, double doors, double, double twins, double, 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 so that thy case will not be shut. We don't want blessing. We want you. Open up the skies. Fall down like fire. We don't want anything but you. Verse 2. Verse 2, please. Say, read. He said, I will go before you and make the crooked places straight. I will break in peace the cage of bronze and cut the bars of iron. So you are going to pray that, Lord, in the cage I am in, in the bondage I am in, that doesn't give me access. Lord, go before me and make the crooked way straight. Let me give you an example. On this, give me Acts chapter 5. Acts chapter 12. I want to prove something to you. You see, prayer is what is used in breaking those metal bars. Acts chapter 12. Bible says that Peter was kept in prison. But constant prayer was made for Peter by the church. Oh, who is there? Acts 12, 5. Amen. Peter was therefore kept in prison. Listen, let me tell you this. Maybe you are Cyrus. Cyrus was the one that gave the command for Israel to return to their captivity. When Daniel saw the vision, it was Cyrus that executed it. You are going to pray that any Cyrus of yours that has been kept in bondage because if they make it, why a year? Some of you, the day the day somebody promised you that I will help you, that's the day everything got destroyed because the prince of your hometown brought the person to Ababa. And when they prayed, constant prayer, and I said, Sunday I'll deal with the word consistency. Constant prayer was offered to God for him by the church. Lead verse 6 going. Let's go to verse 6. And when Herod was about 
to bring him out that night, Peter was sleeping, bound with two chains between two soldiers and the guards before the world, before the door were keeping. Listen, there's a door that is keeping you in prison against your freedom. That that cage can be sickness. That cage can be disappointment. That cage can be promise and fail. Now verse 7, please. Look at it. Now an angel of the Lord stood by him and a light shone in peace and he struck it on his side and raised him up and rest quickly and his chains fell off his side. The next one quickly. Then the angel said to him, get yourself and tie on your side. So he did and he said to him, put on your garments and follow me. The next one quickly. So he went and followed him and did not know that the angel was giving the 10 verse. I think that it will be in the 10 verse quickly. 10. 10. When they were past the first, listen, sometimes your bondage, you know, yeah, you feel back, man. Man, yes, I will And I bought me to give my hair free. Listen. And they were past the first and the second guard post. They came to the iron gate. That leads to the city. Amasa. There's a, there's a gate that leads to America. There's a gate that leads to prosperity. There's a gate that leads to marriage. There's a gate that leads to favor. There's a gate that leads to the city. But that was what they had kept Peter from entering into. But when they prayed, the Bible said, and when they were past the first and the second guard post, demonic post one, demonic post two, they came to the iron gate that leads to the city, which opened to them of his own accord. And they went out and down once to immediately, the angel departed from him. Now give him back Isaiah 45. We are going to pray that in the cage. You see, sometimes you can be in, you think it's a door, but that door is a door of bondage. Say, oh Lord, go before me and make the crooked way straight. Break in peace the gates of bronze and the bars of iron. I want my freedom to enter into my city, to enter into my prosperity, lift up your voice and begin to pray. Educational doors, educational doors open it, international doors open it, financial doors open it, every gate that says you will not move an inch. That is making you sleep. You are not becoming a sleeper like Peter. You are sleeping. You don't have anything to do with your life. Morning, you are sleeping. You are sleeping in the house, sleeping at home, sleeping. You are just sleeping in prison. You don't even iron and you don't want to go anywhere. There's no dress to iron. There's no dress to pick up and go anywhere. You are just sleeping. But you are commanding the Peters. You are commanding our Cyruses to move out of their sleep. To move out of their. Hey, are you praying? Know you are watching. Pray. Makabate shukoto bebe bebe. Zukete beke te beke te bebe bebe. Zukete beke te bebe bebe bebe. Aku adua chichi pita sleeping. Then I can pray. We break the bars of iron, we break the case of bronze, we cut the bars of iron, we break to pieces. Bronze symbolizes suffering. You are breaking the bars of suffering. You are breaking to pieces the system of suffering. In the name of Jesus, break it up. Break it down. Pull it down. Pull it down. He said, I will go before you. Lord, go before me. Lord, go before me. As we enter November, go before me. In the name of Jesus. Verse 3. Now, why would he do that? Because when he said, I will give you the treasures of darkness and hidden riches in what of secret places that you may know that I, the Lord, who called you by your name, the God of Israel. Listen, until certain things break, certain things can come in. 
What are the hidden treasures of darkness? There are some breakthroughs when God gives you, you can't talk about it. Somebody will hit your head. Now, oh, sorry, now I'm going to share one million dollars and now come my peace heaven. You were passing and you got up one day, that's one million dollars in your car boot, so they should come and take it because it is Juju. Please call me. It is what Juju. Say, where they say, where they Juju. And you saw a, a, a foul's blood around it, saw blood. Say, Kai, this one cried. Yeah. If I take it, I'll tend to you. <laughs> <laughs> if you see X by it or see a boat, you are look for bread, add the fry it, thank you, fry the egg and chop and do ill and say, Jesus is Lord, Lord, I thank you. Nonsense. Many people cannot enjoy true riches because when God is giving them the treasures of sick, um, darkness and the hidden riches of secret places. Listen, let me give you an example. Okay? God can make somebody favor you. You don't even understand. If you tell somebody, they will tell you, they'll be boom. This one. It's sugar mommy. It's sugar mommy. So you have to keep quiet. Which woman would just see you and say the way you are like you, taking you to school, buying you a house, buy, give you a car, and say you live your life? Stop, 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 stop. Stop, stop that one. Yeah, stop that one. That one there. Go and tell it to the children. Now, of course. So don't tell this person. Can I hear an amen? amen. Say, Lord, Lord, ask for me in my house. I want the treasures of darkness, hidden riches of secret places. I want to say, that you are God of Israel, that you are the God of bridge ministries. Clap your hands and begin to pray. Mando kete be zuki te be di be, rimeli be gidi be gidi be de be de be de be de. Liki abon da di kete be, zubren tore kete be, ramba kata be zane me, zulian tari be di be di be, rumbon tore be gidi be gidi be di be, zumpa maleke de, leben tore be di kete be de be. Amen. Give me Isaiah chapter 11 verse 3. Read. His delight is in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by the sight of his eyes, nor decide by the hearing of his ears. You are going to tell God that in annexing your prosperity, it should give you strong discernment not to make decisions about what you are seeing or what you are hearing, but your spirit should give you understanding. Well, I'm telling you, you can see a black pot full of gold. And you say, I bind the witches and wizard. Because this is what you saw. Then a prophet will come to you and say, This thing, if you touch it, you will die. So let me keep it for you. One month, come for it. By the time you come, it has turned to stone. Coated with um, gold. So this is what it was. Next time. Am I teaching you here? Huh? Say, I will delight in the fear of the Lord. And I will not judge by my eyes. Nor decide by the hearing of my ear. I will judge by the spirit of the Lord. Say, oh Lord, illuminate my understanding. So that I will not judge by my eyes. Nor what I hear. Clap your hands and begin to pray. This serious prayer. Zuru buru buru, I be loved for we. We are waiting for you. 
Open up the heavens, shower down your presence. We respond to your great love. We won't be satisfied with anything other than We won't be satisfied of all. We won't be satisfied with anything ordinary. We won't be satisfied at all. Open up the skies, fall down the rain. We don't want blessings, we want you. Amen. You see, most of us, when we say let us pray for this, you are joking. The Bible said when people went to Jesus, John the Baptist for baptism, they all go into the water, they go. But when Jesus was put in the water, in his going down, he was praying, and the heavens were opened. Look at 2 Chronicles chapter 7, 13 and 15. 13 to 15. Our last but one prayer. Tomorrow, how many of you can fast and pray? For me, not for you. We are going to pray that me, Peter, God should set me free. How many of you pray that prayer for me? What you pray for me, God should do the same for you. Listen, this is what God told Solomon. Read. When I shut up heaven and there is no rain or command the locust to devour the land or send pestilence among my people, 14. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, one, and seek my face, two, three, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I'll forgive their sins and I will heal their land. It's not enough. 15. Now my eyes will be open and my ears be attentive to prayers made in this place. So if you are going through trouble, locusts simply means usurpers who come to take what belongs to you. He said, if you humble yourself and you pray, so, we are putting it together and we are praying. In 2 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 9. <laughs> Give me verse 8 first. Very common scripture. Give me 8 first. He said, I want to come to you at Tari to Pentecost. Oh, is there verse 8 in the Bible? <laughs> okay. Read. But I will tarry in Ephesus until what? Pentecost. Why? I was telling you that from the beginning of my message that certain cities don't favor certain doors. I will tarry in Ephesus until Pentecost. Because Paul wanted to deal with this thing in Ephesus. So that you encounter Pentecost like can God. Like Feast of Miracles. So that you will have time there and pray. Because he said, if they pray, I will hear. What will they hear? Then he said, what? Verse 6, eight, verse 9. For a great and effective door has opened for, to me. And there are many adversaries. What does this mean? It means that as for the Lord can open, but adversaries will say, Don't go in. Hmm. I repeat it. Adversaries. Mia Reverend Yali. Me could do airport. I would do buy. Then we could do one. Yes, I may name the old passport. Oh, me. A race is gone, mommy is gone, Pastor Charles is gone, Pastor Tony is gone. Their wives are gone. 
only me. My house people. Ha. When many man should be be as Dubai. I think disgrace with America. Dubai. Crofunwe. Dubai. So, as for the door, it can open. Marriage proposals can come. Business opportunities can come. But there are people who are called adversaries. One of them is the prince of Persia. The principality of your hometown. Say in the name of Jesus. Any door opened for me for, from God between now and can God that door must open I must enter I must enjoy it I must have it. A great door is open for me and I will enter in I disgrace every adversary every opponent every person that does not want me to enjoy the door educational doors marital doors favor doors international doors mention your own doors and begin to pray begin to pray When in Brio, what when it just said, Don't it be what not play? Move what could you do? Buy Oko Rock for room. I see a man room. Hey, Ziketi book at Tamene and Danny Mosi Ketiben, not here. Ziprent took up a band, Tabi Ketiben, Tori Bidi Bidi. Rapen toki antari bidi kete be kutu medi antari bi zinte kola antari be de amara ba zumpa kata ba antari bi antari bi be rekete ben antari bi antari bi rapakata ba antari bi de be rompe di kata monsi antari bi de be rapakata ben antari bi de be lakata ba antari bi de be zumpe kete ben antari bi de be lekete be kete ben in the name of Jesus in the territorial spirit. That is fighting us from annexing our next level. By the power in the name of Jesus, we bring that adversary down in the principality, in my location, in this location, in my hometown, in my house, in my family, in my jurisdiction that does not want me to succeed. Be aborted in the name of Jesus. Amen. Yesterday. Mommy was telling me something. She said, she had decided to do some dangerous prayers. And while she was praying, a bed from nowhere came to fall down on the roof. Force landing. You are going to pray that any territorial adversary, you know what is territorial adversary? Let me give you an example. A territorial adversary says that this is what I want and this is what must happen. So, if let's say in your family nobody has gone to university, it means that you can go to university as long as you bear that family name. That is why Abraham, Abraham was called Abraham because it will not have favored him. Me, I will not lie to you. The day I changed, I added Dwayne to my name, I became born again. I don't know why. Because all Yalis are funny. <laughs> the day I added Dwayne, because my, my Yale is to be Yale. But the truth is that during the territorial spirit, it says that you can't chop 100,000. I remember there was a time we wanted to buy something abroad. The bank said we can't because me, I finished my threshold. At my level, I can't bring buy anything for the rest of the year because my standard is finished. I had to call Pastor David, open a dollar account by force for Pastor David. So that Pastor, I'll transfer the money. I have the money. 
but I can't buy. So I have to give the money to Pastor David. For Pastor David to buy that thing and bring it. Why? Because Bank of Ghana say, Bank of Ghana is the principality. I've exhausted my level. So it's like you are in secondary school and your mother gives your school mother, your school father money that when you need money, she give it to you. And that school mother say, where the ten cities for the month it's in the account on farm now, and the money is in his pocket. I will change my school mother. How many of you are with me here? So, so sometimes the door is opened. It's there. But you are being disqualified by virtue of the principality who is around you. That's why I'm saying that you poor must pray for me tomorrow. Because me, if I'm also a pastor, I'm a principality. So me to my level must change. So that you to your level can graduate. So you are going to pray that any principality, whether you know them or you don't know them, who have decided that this is your level, the person must clear up because you are breaking the barrier. Amen. Clap your hands and begin to pray. Is it a bell combian to be get a bill supion ticket booster? Repico to Pacabu Bacata Bacata Bata, Zoom Penny Catabanto Tiata de Bata, the Gadaban Doria, Narabat Rock, Bia Corom, Rontia Corion, is it a get a big dub, Zimpeco Brentory, Leketeben, Codibe, Rapacataba, Zoom Peketeben, Lepecon Taribe, Rakataban Taribe, Raketebe, Cotopen, Repia Ton Taribe. I cannot be qualified and disqualified. It's not possible. You cannot be qualified and yet be disqualified. It is not possible. You cannot be qualified and yet eliminated. It is not possible. You cannot have the thing in your account and it will tell you that you've exhausted what you can do for the year. No, you cannot. Break that threshold, break that threshold, break that threshold. They say you cannot chop more than ten thousand dollars. Break that barrier. No, you are increasing in understanding, you are increasing in knowledge, you are increasing in favor, you are increasing in levels. You are not making just going higher. Amen. Years ago, I, I traveled and I still had money in my account. And I wanted to buy something outside. I tried to withdraw money. They say, I can't. The money is mine. So what I did was I called Pastor David. Then he went to the bank and he told them that my pastor is withdrawing money to buy something there, but he can't. They said, oh, based on what he decided, he told us that he can never withdraw above 5,000. So let him send us an email telling us that he can increase it to 20,000 or 50,000. Then we can allow him to transact business. You are going to tell your prayer that any intimidation lower rank you have ranked yourself that is making the enemy to decide your fate you are breaking it sometimes it is not it's like you have signed a some people talk like that if i get some small car and i drive I like it. I don't want that big, big car. People will stop you. I don't want any trouble. That is what you've been telling yourself. So that has become your threshold. How many of you agree with me here? 
But you need to sometimes break that trail and tell them, the devil, I said this, but I changed it because this is not what I want again. Oh, yeah, passport, passport, visa, nonsense. Now you've forgotten that that's what you told God. Now you want to travel, the doors are not opening. But you told God, if even I get a passport, because in your family, nobody has got a passport before. So when you got a passport, you have arrived. You bought a car, Opel Cadet. You are still using the Cadet. The whole family, nobody has bought a car. So when you come with the Cadet, then they clap for you. But you know that the Cadet has expired. You need something better. But because you told God that if you get Opel Cadet, you are done. Since Opel Cadet, You've, every time, the only money you get is for servicing and replacing parts. <laughs> you've never had money to buy those things before. God, that is the threshold you've given yourself. Say in the name of Jesus. I cannot belittle myself. Now listen to me again. Another one. If you look at the Bible very well, God wanted the Jews to get their promised land fast. Two people went to their promised land. The twelve people went to their promised land. Numbers 13. When they came, one group said, we saw giants. Two people said, we saw apples, lemons. The people said, giants said, we won't go, we won't go, we won't go, and they didn't go. So, people, listen, you, people can enter into opportunity, and their eye of understanding will tell them that this is trouble I don't like. So, you're also going to pray in addition, any friends I've associated myself with, who are belittling me, who are making sure I don't move on, God, I disassociate myself from them. Because anybody that will limit me, I bind that person in the name of Jesus. Even me, if I'm doing myself, I bind myself in the name of Jesus. Lose yourself and go. Let's go. Come on. Let's pray. Reverend David, take over. Lose yourself and go. It's your service. You are praying this prayer throughout this week. All departments, all heads of department, individuals, all members, all on social media. These are the prayer you are praying because I am dealing with doors and gates on the day of Feast of Miracle. Zikata ba luke te ben kunte de bi de ben pre be ke te be ke te be ke te bi de bi de bi de yan tare bin rapra takra manto le be ke te ben le ke te ben every limit I have given myself against the will of God I bring it to non-existence I lift up the standard oh God and I say your will will be done on earth as it is in heaven as you have mandated me to walk in so will I walk in as you have yet marked me to walk in so will I walk in as you have earmarked me to be successful so will I be and the enemy cannot stop me the enemy cannot stop me nobody can stop me my friends cannot stop me like Caleb and Joshua I have another spirit I have developed another mentality I have a different understanding I have a different mindset I am my my mindset is illuminating I have understanding that my teacher like Keep praying. Amen. The last scripture came, so give it to me. Some. 119 verse 99 everybody listen to me we are going to pray a serious prayer god make me understand more than my teachers <laughs> that is a level some say pastor so you want me to know that yes i have more understanding than all my teachers why for your testimonies are my meditation what does David mean? Say he spends time thinking about the things God has done. And as he keeps thinking about the testimonies, great things he has done, he gains more understanding than his teachers. Teacher Fupiomabon. That's why a lot of teachers and keep becoming teachers and their students become professors. Sometimes if you're not careful, 
you will limit yourself based on the knowledge of your teacher. Pastor say, na yeho. But you could have learned more. You could have gained more than your teacher. Can I hear an amen? amen. Can I hear an amen? amen? Say, oh Lord, I want to gain more understanding than my teachers, my parents, my boss, anybody that is higher than me. I want to gain more understanding than them. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Pray. If you gain more understanding than your teachers, when they teach, you, you don't struggle to understand. Keep praying. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray that you have more understanding, more understanding, Makabe Shedanabit. Understanding is enlightened. You enter into that door. Nothing can stop you. If you are sick in any part of your body, just lay your hands there. Just lay your hands there if you are sick in any part of your room. I curse that infirmity to lose now. You are made with whole. That sickness leaves your body now in the name of Jesus. I declare you free now in the name of Jesus. Every pain in the abdomen, every pain in the heart, every pain in the waist, 
every pain in the head, every pain in the chest, every pain in the spinal cord. I cast it to loose now in the name of Jesus. Wherever you find yourself, whether in this place or online, every sickness within your body, I lose you now in the name of Jesus. You are made whole in Jesus' name. Begin to check yourself. Begin to check yourself. Shall I please be seated? Can you lift up your offering? And begin to pray over your offering. to prove it. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We ask that as we present our offering, bless us, Lord. Let our lives be transformed and cause us to receive in abundance. In Jesus' name. If you have a tithe, if you have a pledge, if you have a seed, can you also lift it up? Father, you say we should present ye our tithe and you cause the windows of heavens to be opened upon us. You rebuke every devourer. Let every devourer be rebuked in the name of Jesus. Amen. Can the basket please go around as we take our offering? Let us take the following announcement. This Sunday, we are having a feast of miracles. Somebody say feast of miracles. Somebody say feast of miracles. So the morning service is just one service from 8 to 10 then we have the second service at 4 which is the feast of miracles and i'll plead with you that you make it a point to be here amen i didn't hear somebody say amen but whilst you are coming don't come alone come with a loved one come with a friend and that you always say something that friend who always comes to you for help bring the person to receive whatever has made you who you are i didn't hear somebody say amen so let's all make it a point to be at the Feast of Miracles this Sunday. And as the father of the house have declared that yet tomorrow, those of us will be able to fast, let's fast for him. And let's also pray that every door that we need to enter, we will enter that door. Amen. Well, I didn't hear somebody's amen. I didn't hear somebody's amen. Let us also take note that can God is coming on from the 22nd of November to the 29th of November. This one is from a grapevine. So 22nd to 29th November is Can God. So let us start preparing ourselves. We have just some 20 days to go or 20 something days to go. So um, let's also take note and prepare ourselves for that. Amen. Or oh, I didn't hear somebody say amen. Not forgetting Saturday morning, Judgment Day. Somebody say Judgment Day. Somebody say Judgment Day. This Saturday was a wonderful one, and I know lives were transformed. And I believe as you join us for this Saturday's Judgment Day, your life will not be the same. Amen. Like that is saying, we are decreeing things. You must come and set some precedents. Amen. You must set some laws in your family because sometimes people spiritually set certain laws and they impose certain laws upon us you see it gets to a point they say they amend it and they bring a review so you hear at so and so 1960 which has been reviewed in 20 or 2009 or 2019 because it has to be reviewed so sometimes you must also come and review certain laws that your family have set. You must review certain laws that some head of the family have set. So when you come for such services, we, you give judgment and you set the precedence for those laws to change. So don't miss the judgment day service. Someone say, don't miss the judgment day service. So it's Saturday morning, 5 a.m. 
5 a.m. Saturday morning, and your life will never be the same. Amen. Shall I please be on our feet and stretch forth our hands over the offering? Let's pray over the offering. Father, we thank you as we have given, we ask, Lord, let every blessing that attaches come over our lives. In the name of Jesus. Amen. One last thing, we are praying for Feast of Miracles. This Sunday, we ask that the angels of God will be on assignment. Anything that will be a hindrance against the service, we come against it in the name of Jesus. Because such services, the enemy tries to fight it. I didn't hear somebody say amen. So we are going to pray that every plan of the enemy to disrupt the service, we come against it in the name of Jesus. Anyone who have decided to be at the service, we make way for them to be at the service. Nothing will stop them. Say, oh Lord, we commit Feast of Miracles into your hands. Anything that will be a hindrance, we come against it with the blood of Jesus. Anything that will try to stop people for the service, we come against it with the blood of Jesus. We speak against every rain. We make the atmosphere conducive for that service in the name of jesus lift your hands and begin to clap and pray commit the technica commit the instruments commit everything into the hands of god that it will be protected by the blood of jesus the devil cannot disrupt the service in the name of jesus we set the holy ghost curfew Pray committing the service into the hands of God. That the atmosphere will be conducive. As we prepare for this service, Lord, we pray for doors. We pray that everyone who has to be in that service we declare their safety in the name of Jesus. Makabo shantelemen, libra santa baya, le kabo shandalaba, makabalaba, labo shantelemen, le makababa, ya banaba, ya labalaba, le brandalaba. Every limit is removed from your life in the name of Jesus. Let open doors come your way. Let God favor you in Jesus' name. God bless you and see you at the service. God bless you. Friday also, let's not forget for leaders training. Let us be here.